Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to some more Pico CTF tutorials and videos. I know I've been away from this for a little bit, so I'm happy to jump back in. Hopefully I can keep this momentum going. This challenge is called Programmers Assemble. It is the next challenge in the reverse engineering category for level 2, 75 points. Challenge prompt here is you found a text file with some really low level code. Some value at the beginning has been X'd out. Can you figure out what that value should have been to make the main return value 0x1? So just 1 as hexadecimal. Submit the answer as a hexadecimal number with no extraneous zeros, blah, blah, blah. The hints here, all the commands can be found here along with what they do. It may be useful to be able to run the code with test values. All right, so this is a Wikipedia page for the assembly language. We can go ahead and wget this file. I'm just going to copy the URL. I've got a folder set up for it, so let's wget it here. And then we should be able to open up this assembly.s file, and we do have some code written in assembly. So you may have heard me discuss a little bit before, we have two different flavors of syntax and how the language really looks in assembly. We have the Intel syntax and the AT&T syntax. This is AT&T syntax in that it has dollar signs representing constants and percent signs before it registers, uh, before, before it discusses registers. So you can see that just here, dollar signs, dollar signs, and percent signs for our registers. EAX, EBX, and ECX are registers that we can use for a 32-bit system. And we can look through this a little bit more. We've got that reference available to us, and we'll totally, totally take a look at that for some of the specific instructions. Does it actually cover some of these instructions? Scrolling through it, not that much. Okay, whatever. <laughs> we'll Google around as we need to. So let's take a look at this right here. I am going to split the screen so I can talk about some of these these instructions as we work through it. Uh, dot global, dot global main. This is just trying to define a section. And main is just where we're going to start. The assembly code runs in a procedural matter, or procedural fashion. So that means top to bottom, etc. Um, until we get to certain labels, which are these notions here of a name followed by a colon, uh, a label that can represent a certain kind of subroutine or a certain process, um, just given that indicator here. It's essentially a spaghetti code reference and that we can jump to a specific label, as you can see that right here in this jump instruction. And let's get to it. So the main label where we will start with starts by setting EAX register to some value. And we don't know what, whatever. We'll just note that by question marks. EBX, I'm, I'm not actually writing code here. Keep in mind, I'm just taking notes so we can kind of reverse engineer it line by line. Uh, EBX is set to zero. And remember, I, this reads kind of backwards because it is AT&T syntax. That's the direction of the operands here. So... Intel is a little bit nicer to read because it's what we're used to from kind of left to right declaring variables like that. But since this is AT&T, we'll work backwards and, and understand it. So ECX, the next register is set to 0x4, so 4 in hexadecimal. And then we continue. We move on to this next loop. Um, we aren't entering that or anything specific. We're still going in a procedural fashion. But since it has a label, we can get to different positions in the code based off things like jump. Same thing with JZ, this instruction here, because what this command does, or this instruction, is it's testing EAX with EAX, and that essentially just tests is this, or is EAX equal to zero? So, test if EAX is equal to zero, and what JZ does is it will jump if that condition is not met to fin. Or maybe actually is met. Let's go ahead and check. The beauty of this is that we can research. We can Google. So they give an example here. The Jay-Z instruction is a conditional jump that follows a test. Is it commonly used to explicitly test for something being equal to zero, where JE is commonly found after CMP instruction or compare? So we've got an example here, even very, very similar to what we're looking at, where it's testing EAX and EAX if these two things, if test, test if EAX is equal to zero. And if that condition is met, it will jump to a, loca to a location, and in our case, it is jumping to fin. So testing if EX is equal to zero, jump to fin, or finish in our case, the very, very end. But in this case, we can assume that EX is not set to zero, so we would continue on. We would not take this jump, and we just continue on line by line in that procedural form. So what we do is we add ECX and EBX, and that EBX is going to have that ECX value added to it, so that means that ECX will be 
or EBX, sorry, will be plus equal 4 because we know that ECX is the value of 4 and EBX is just going to add that value to it. Again, kind of reading backwards because of that AT&T syntax. Now, that DEC instruction will decrement EEX, EEAX. So that means that value will subtract 1 and will continue. We will jump to the loop, as in we'll go back up to loop. So we'll do this over and over and over again, adding 4 to EBX and decreasing EAX slowly, 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 until EAX equals 0. And once it does, it'll go to the finish right down here to this label. Now this will go ahead and determine with that compare instruction, as we saw here in the reference, don't know why I lost connection there. Okay, it's back. Use to perform comparison. So we can compare one and the other, compare one and the other, and if they are not zero, or if that condition is met where they are the same, it will jump if equal to good. So good is another label over here. Otherwise, it will set uh, move zero EAX. So finish if EBX is equal to this value in hex. Whoop, sorry. Jump to good. Else. EAX equals zero and jump to end, which will just end the program with a return statement. So we want, as the challenge prompt suggested, our EAX to actually end up with this one as its value. So that means we want eventually our EBX to equal this value. So the way that EBX actually changes is because of this loop, right? So what can we do to make this happen? Well, Let's look at what this loop is doing. It's adding over and over and over again the value of EBX four times dependent on the value of EAX. So, you hear me saying that? Like that is trying to say addition multiple times over and over again. And what does that sound like? That sounds like multiplication. So, what that means is we've got something multiplied by four to equal what we want, this value in hex. So to figure out what this value is, we can do some simple algebra and just divide 4 out of that. Great. So let's figure out what that is. I'm just going to fire up idle here, take this value in hex, go ahead and divide it by 4, and we have 3882. These numbers may be different from your side because, um, again, Pico CTF does random challenge generation, but I think the logic is still the same. So the numbers may be different, but hopefully you still understand what we're doing here. And all we are doing is that simple division to figure out that original value of EAX. So let's go ahead and convert that to hex. And I've got 0x F2A. I'll go ahead and submit that. See what we've got down at the very bottom. And we solved it. Awesome. 75 points and we're moving up on the scoreboard. Cool. I hope that made sense. Hope that was a little bit interesting to walk through and learn. Um, it's just assembly. I, I say just assembly with significant disclaimer because I am not by any means good at reverse engineering, uh, especially in large amounts. <laughs> this is a nice small dosage where I could piece it together, but reverse engineering whole binary is kind of hard for me because it's just very overwhelming. So I've got to get better at that. But that is what it takes to solve the programmer's assemble challenge. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please do feel free to Google research, look things up, especially if you just don't know what instruction will do or see what other oddity oddities and idiosyncrasies each of them have because like the Jay-Z thing that sets uh, the zero flag, etc., etc. There's a lot more to read about and learn, but these are all good resources online if you're just willing to Google. Quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I cannot say it enough. $1 a month or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you a special early access folder where you can see all the videos that are released on YouTube before they go live because I normally record in bulk and then let them upload gradually day by day. Um, and that way, if you don't want to wait, that's the best way to do it. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server, link in the description. It's an awesome community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. If you want to hang out with me and other cool people, that's the best way to do it. I'd love to see you guys on Patreon. Thank you, thank you, and I'd love to see you in the next video. Thanks.